Good evening and welcome as we gather together this night for our Christmas Eve celebration. A special welcome to Martha Hellman, our uh, soloist this night, and give you thanks and give thanks for your gift that you are sharing with us. We pray that this worship service, this time of prayer, of hearing God's word, a time of um, praise and giving thanks for the birth of Christ, will be a blessing for us all in these days. And we will begin with um, our leader in just a moment to take a, just a deep breath. Again, and open ourselves to God's spirit. When we wait in the night in the hush that only stars can hold as they bend towards the coming of the light. When we wait in the night, laboring with anticipation of what this night shall bring. When we wait in the night listening to the cadence of minutes beat in rhythm with the birth of hope. May we hold For God is on the way. The mother is laboring, the father pacing the stable, readying the word, is waiting the light, is sliding, and the promise is breaking through. When we wait in the longing, in the expectation of good news, may we choose to wait together and find we have moved to the end of our seats for in such anticipation.
our prayer continues. Creator of the stars of night, bless the long hours of this night with the warmth of your presence. Come to all who suffer in any way. Grant rest to the weary, freedom to those who are burdened, and bright hope to those who despair. Strengthen us as we await your coming once again through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Christmas proclamation. Many ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth, declaring both the dark of night and the light of day good, and then formed humanity in God's own image. Long after the great flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant, 21 centuries from the time the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah and Hagar and Ishmael, 13. Centuries after Moses led the people out of slavery in Egypt and Miriam danced in freedom. 1100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges. 1000 years from the anointing of David as king. Hundreds of years after the prophet's calls for justice for the people in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year, and the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus. While the Roman world proclaimed Pax Romana, or peace through occupation, after nine months of growth in the womb of Mother Mary, was born into this, our world. Our reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there, was, and there was evening, and there was morning. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God sent them in the set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Word of God, word of life.
Now we have a reading from Isaiah. A shoot shall come from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatting together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Word of wisdom, word of God. Thanks. Thanks.
a reading. Shh. Can you hear it? An expected silence, a hushed anticipation, as if the very galaxy is holding its breath. There are some truths even the stars know, like darkness, like loneliness, and how the night can be a living thing, and how once long ago the night waited in wonder along with the darkness and the loneliness. For the sound of a baby's cry, for the miraculous to come down to the earth mundane. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
invite us to stand as we are able for the first part of the Christmas story. You will notice that it is broken up when we sing infant holy. You may be seated and you may remain seated then for that part of the gospel as well. The good news of the birth of Jesus Christ from Luke's gospel, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from the emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And that baby can stay. It's okay. You can go out if you want. But th th this is why we're here. It's a baby. So. He wants to be, yes, yeah. I can be louder than he is, I promise. Okay. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. You may be seated. region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid for see I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had gone, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph 
and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The good news of the birth of Jesus. know Diane did you know that I am so thankful for your musical gifts for your choice in choral congregational and special music yes <laughs> Diane did you know that I am also extremely grateful that you have not had the choir sing that regrettably popular Christmas song, Mary, did you know? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you did know that, yes. Now, if you don't know, and I know folks, a lot of folks love this song, but anyway, Mary, did you know, was written in about 1984 by Mark Lowry and is put to music in 1991 and it has now been covered by the Pentatonics, Reba McIntyre, CeeLo Green, Carrie Underwood, Dolly Parton, just to name a few. With lyrics, if you haven't heard it, like, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. With lyrics like that, Diane, I'm pretty sure you did know <laughs> that this would not be a favorite song of mine. Because while the song does seek to tell the story of Jesus and commendably expanding it beyond the cutesy nativity, this is also a classic example of mansplaining, really. <laughs> Which happens if you don't know what mansplaining is. Let me womansplain it. <laughs> mansplaining is when uh, a man explains something to a woman that she probably did know already and understood very well. Now, many of us do know that in Luke's gospel, Mary did know quite a bit. Mary did know at least in part the significance, the import of this life that she would birth. She'd had a conversation with an angel, a messenger. She'd actually even sung her whole own song about, the mag about this child and what God was doing. It's called the Magnificat. She pro sung this song proclaiming how God would turn the world upside down and save people. So yes, Mary was not a clueless woman. Those two words shouldn't even be put together. <laughs> She was a prophet, a singer, a teacher, her own voice for God's love in the world. Now, of course, she didn't know all the details. I'm sure she actually really hoped for a peaceful life for her child. A life like we sing of and we so often imagine on these Christmas Eves down through the years hoping for, praying for an alternative to the pain, the tragedy, the struggle we experience and see all around us. That is one thing that is perhaps becoming more evident 
as we see all around us. That is one thing that is becoming perhaps more well known, accepted, acknowledged at least in these years as we witness the deaths of innocents in Gaza and Israel. A truth that is also about that first Christmas because that birth was not quaint, quiet, or cute. We have all of our beautiful nativities, but it wasn't quite as tidy. This is a truth made explicit and very contemporary by the nativity scene in the Evangelical Lutheran Christmas Church in Bethlehem. Perhaps you saw this on the news, who their nativity has the baby Jesus set amidst a pile of rubble and instead of just serenely standing there, the other characters look like they're coming to rescue the child from the rubble. We have added a bit of rock and rubble here as well to our own nativity set here. Because we don't ever know. We do not know what life will throw at us. What powers, international, political, economic, physical, or mental will impact us. We can each and every day think of ourselves as being born into this reality that is actually so much, and we know, out of our control. It is like, sometimes feel like an emperor mandating a census in order to levy some taxes, to pay for his armies and building projects, evicting us from our comfortable and safe space, like we just heard about in Luke's gospel, Luke's nativity story. It's not mentioned there just merely for the timing. It's telling us the powers are at work. We don't always know what those are and how they will impact us. Like Mary and Joseph, and not even writers of Christmas songs will know. We don't know. And that's the thing, especially when we look at babies and thank you. I'm so glad you brought us, thank you for the object lesson. Here. No, no, definitely not. No. But you look at that baby. We have no idea what that baby will do and become, what he'll say, make, what will happen in his life, what gifts. Even if you have multiple children, you know, those of us that have had a few multiples of them, you can't tell from one to the other, right? No, they're different often. You can't tell. You don't know what's going to happen, how they will grow, how they will change, and what they will do. And they will do more than we can predict or imagine. So while Mary knew that God was definitely up to something, she didn't quite know exactly where it would go, and neither do we. Because each Christmas, we don't just look back and think, you know, especially if we've been coming year after year, we don't just think, oh yeah, I know the story. A story that is so familiar. We look for that familiarity to give us comfort and joy. But what God is doing each Christmas isn't just about what God did thousands of years ago about what we know, but truly it's about what God is doing now, what God is doing in each of us this night, how God's love is being born into our hearts and our lives this night. Christmas is about celebrating a birth a long time ago, a beautiful scene, but Christmas is birthing God's love in us, in each of us, not babies, but still you are full of power and potential and possibility. The church, 
not just this one, but the church may be small or out of fashion. Sometimes we might feel like it's just like a baby born in some little town, a baby born into people defeated and oppressed. But we can do so much with God's power and presence birthed in us. God's love is born, not in big, shiny productions, but in the places where we are hurting, that need healing, that hunger for hope. And the thing about that divine love, it grows. It grows just like a baby, just like a child. It grows in each and every one of us and changes us. God's love moves us from the cradle of certainty into a full life of risky, bold, daring, powerful love. Just where that will take us, I don't know. You don't know, we don't know. But what we do know is that the true gift of Christmas is that love. It's not predictable. It's not limited. It, like the baby Jesus, like the man Jesus, didn't follow some nice, tidy script or follow the lyrics of a catchy tune. The love of God birthed in the world, I tell you, I do not know what you will do with it, what we will do, each one of us. And that is the mystery and the promise, not of just this night, but of tomorrow. The power of holy love, praying for it to come into our lives, into this world, into the hurting, wondering, wandering, and through its holy power to make us new, to remake us, turn us inside out, and this world upside down. And so, this evening, let us open ourselves up to that mystery trusting the cry of a baby born, of love coming into the world and entering into what we don't know. Amen.
in joy and thanksgiving at Christ's birth, let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. We pray for all faithful people, for all welcome messengers of good news. Let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. For the nations and their rulers, for the corporations and their executives, for anyone with power over the lives of others, let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. For those who defend the helpless, for those who strive for justice, for those who work to find a place, a way to peace, for all the world and all who live in it, let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. For anyone suffering, sick, alone, afraid, or in any kind of trouble, we pray for those names that we say aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. For our own community, for friends, neighbors, and family near and far. We especially pray for those we name in the silence of our hearts or out loud. For those who have died, we pray especially for those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Let us sing to the Lord a new song. On peace, for what else do the people pray? Let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. We offer thanksgiving for Mary's firstborn son, good news of great joy. Let us sing to the Lord a new song. On earth, peace, goodwill among people. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Before the eyes of all the nations you sent your son, the exact imprint of love itself, to be our salvation. With the shepherds in the fields, let us go now to Bethlehem, there to find Christ in our hearts and in the world. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace and reconciliation with one another.
Then again after the meal, he took the cup again, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray together. Loving presence, luminous in all creation, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. May we reflect on earth the yielding perfection of the heavens. Help us to receive an illumined measure from the earth this day. Forgive us when we trespass against others, human and other than human, as we forgive others who trespass against us. Keep us on the path of wisdom when we are tempted to take the selfish path. May it be your rule we follow, your power we exercise, and your radiance that allures. May this be the truth that guides our lives, the ground from which our future will grow until we meet again. Amen. All are welcome at the table. Tonight we receive communion either from those cups that you have, or by intention you will receive a bit of bread, or a, if you would like a gluten-free wafer, just let me know, I'll also have those. Then you dip that into the juice, and then you have both the communion at once.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and peace. The story tells us that it's those who wait in the world's shadows who are the first to know of the Christ child, born in darkness, bringing great light. So leave here this evening to be carriers of the rumor of peace and the truth of love into a world longing for love. Pray for justice another is waiting for, and speak of the hope another needs to breathe. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. 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 Oh. 